A counterweight trebuchet was the king of all siege engines. A catapult capable of smashing down castle walls from great distances. At Warwick Castle in England, they've built a replica, one of the largest in the world. Originating in 7th century China, by the 13th century, trebuchets had evolved into devastatingly powerful weapons. Such a simple design, but so effective. It has several key features. A pivoted arm with a weight at one end and a sling to hold the projectile at the other. To prime, the six-ton weight is raised using tread wheels. So this is one of the wheels, one of two, that's attached to an axle, which would lift the counterweight, weighing six tons. It's based on muscle power alone. What's essential about launching a projectile as far as possible is making sure that this end of the arm is moving as fast as possible. So once that weight drops, it really sends this point of the arm moving at its highest velocity. This was done by positioning the pivot close to the counterweight and by launching the projectile from a sling. When released, the sling whips round, vastly increasing the launch speed. Trebuchets were carefully aimed, like modern guns. In order to weaken the castle walls or even breach them, you had to make sure that the projectiles hit the same spot every single time. For each projectile to follow the same trajectory, they all had to be the same weight and shape. To achieve this, masons used a gauge. Now, I'm going to load this projectile into the sling. Oh. This one must weigh about 25 kilograms, but some projectiles can get up to 150 kilograms. That's the weight of two men. Trebuchets were also used to throw burning tar, beehives, even dead bodies. Anything to cause maximum distress to the enemy. Did you hear that whoosh? It was the counterweight trebuchet's lethal combination of power and accuracy that made it the ultimate medieval siege weapon. Victory over King Stephen at Lincoln gave Matilda the upper hand in her fight for the English crown. But in the years that followed, fragile loyalties shifted and under threat of capture, Matilda was forced to retreat. As her holdings in England came under attack from the king's army, it fell to her son Henry to keep Matilda's claim to the throne alive. Inside the strong stone walls of the castle at Wallingford, Matilda's men held firm against a brutal siege by forces loyal to King Stephen. King Stephen's army had constructed a fortified perimeter outside the castle, trapping Matilda's men inside. However, reinforcements were on the way from Matilda's son, Henry. Her forces needed to hold the walls until they arrived.
data spray on dot. See they to work. Readers is ready for Hester. That will pay on dot. I got on Chat. Hoping to claim Wallingford, King Stephen's siege forces launched a renewed attack on the castle. A Roger, reader is let's a three step her. Hoping to crack the mighty stone walls of Wallingford, King Stephen's forces launched another attack. Matilda's forces held firm against the attack, cutting down the enemy soldiers. Boom to heal. Boom for the Dende Ronker, Steph Cannon. Each other's thunder. Well, Eden, what day did work then? Yarwe Shetton. Yeah, 
Set on ready. Boom for the Redender on See they to work. Leader is ready for his Matilda's forces repelled the attack and held the castle. Matilda's forces received word that Henry's troops were getting closer to Wallingford. Soon the combined numbers of the two armies could tip the scales in their favour. Henry's reinforcements approached Wallingford. United under Matilda's banner, the two armies were ready to engage Stephen's forces. It is Sita for actors. Surface! It's limit to hear it. Adi Tadiara Armas! For Fenner! Today is not The 
Shulu Kunenai. Harkoneth all. Every charm and ten death. No, Tulkes. Set it for me on the way, Tende. Let it off guard. Dress it, yo. We are standing. And then tend to serve it. Obesia. Arthur Kanitas Yara. All is with it. Who stay told us? Oh, me on Arthur Kanitas! Henry and Matilda's forces struck out at the besieging army, weakening the enemy's hold on Wallingford's perimeter. Building done. Hit look is good. What needeth be undone? See they to work. New Tulkis, set it young. And see ye build it thing. Be off yard to Hester's tune folk. Building done. It he'll build a that for they. Yet to thee ready for Hester's. Toon folk are in the ready. It is seeker. He follow me on the way, Tende. Let it off guard. Work is he ready? On fire. Oh! On the trigger. The lips are down. Yeah! 
It is Sitha for Actus. Ah, yeah. The Namunkas as fat well yet to be ready for Hestus. Ich be boon to hear it. Me why is clear. Boon to Hishil Enon. Spring out of a ten day Manganel Yara. New Tulkes, set at Yar. A detail Yara Arma. Every Tulkeskov. It is Sita for Actor. Sergeant! We are still under. Ready for Hester. Ungent Yara. Spring out other Ungent Yara to win the hit. Get to be ready for us, old war day breakers. Mid wilderness. Says engines are waiting. Critter, stand up. It's limited to hear them. Spring says engine for it. Critter! Oh, 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 As Matilda's forces cut down the besieging army, clearing another section of the blockade.
Be ready for Hestes. One day eight. It is Serge of her one day. Some good fire, sir. Dress at you. We have got it. Mark up a destroyer. We will be ready. Absolutely. Matilda's forces overwhelmed the enemy and cleared the castle's perimeter.
The joint forces of Matilda and Henry had swarted King Stephen's siege of the strategic castle at Wallingford. After over a decade of conflict, Matilda's claim to the throne was still alive. Wallingford, in the shadow of the castle, Matilda's faction, commanded by her son Henry, proved it was still willing to fight King Stephen for the crown. But after 15 years of conflict, both sides had had enough. So they made a deal. Matilda would surrender her claim to the throne on condition that when Stephen died, her eldest living son Henry would succeed him. A year later, he was crowned King Henry II and proceeded to grow the kingdom into the mighty Angevin Empire. But, once again, what the king had spent his life building, his own children were destined to destroy. King Henry II had four surviving legitimate sons and he planned to divide up his kingdom between them. But they fought bitterly for dominance. Against the odds, Henry's youngest son, John, became king. But King John was deeply unpopular. He lost huge swathes of the Angevin Empire gained by his father, then failed to reclaim them in expensive battles. Paid for by taxing his subjects. Eventually, England's barons could take it no more. They forced John to agree to a charter that restricted his power. The Magna Carta. But he went against his word. Furious, they rebelled inviting Prince Louis of France to invade England. In 1216, Louis sailed to Dover and set his sights on taking this. Dover Castle. Held by forces loyal to King John, it was commanded by Hubert de Burr. He described the castle as the key to England. He was right. If it fell to the French, so would the kingdom.
Asked to invade by the rebel barons, Prince Louis's French army launched an assault on the castle at Dover. Opening a crack in the outer defenses, the invading forces charged the castle walls. The garrison at Dover would meet the French with clenched fists and an iron will. Dover could not fall. Commander Hubert de Burr rallied his men to hold back the French and defend the castle. While the castle's garrison thwarted the first French attack and prepared for a second, a new resistance force was building in the English countryside. A skilled bowman and fierce patriot known as Willikin of the Weald began to muster a resistance to the French invasion. Determined to keep the crown in King John's hands, Willikin would rally every available archer to the cause. With his bowmen assembled, Willikin planned to ambush the French siege engines on their way to the enemy camp. The 
Kin's band of archers made short work of the French reinforcements. But if they hoped to ease the burden on Dover's garrison, Willikin's ambush force could not relent. Willikin's resistance force continued to grow, adding more skilled men to its ranks. Can I do? 
Hearkeneth or stareth Uta every chan, holdeth at onza. The French launched a renewed attack on the castle, but thanks to Willikin's ambush force, the enemy had been greatly weakened. With Willikin's archers weakening the siege from outside the castle, the garrison at Dover repelled the French attack. 
Willikin ordered his archers to resume their strikes on the French reinforcements. Something to share, sir. What will thou? Freck is hark, Nuthan. Come upon. And sweet, the yes, sir. Where is the end? Where is the end? It will. And sweet, the yes, sir. Glidande ne hurt us no one near at all. Nuthan, come upon. Hodre doe heotes! Rense! Beren tolkes! Weben se cande! Yepe me a boot! It's in shake
Are it uh, what needeth work? Uh, yeah. What? See what? what needeth be see thing to Yara to check. Hey, every job intend. Attend Shafar way. Test this cover. Yeah. On the botas. Better. Willikens' archers had decimated the French reinforcements. But undeterred, the French mustered what troops they could and launched another attack on the castle. The hardy English garrison held fast, refusing to let the castle fall to the French invaders. Willikin rallied his archers to continue strikes on the weakening French. Hey, 
Tender Frackers, Periende Hestes Nu. Jeppe Mierre Hestes. Al Swiss, yes. For each understock, each will held a hair. For the two times. Well, 
See say to work, eh? What? Arita? See thing. What need it? Yare to done some work, eh? Engineer. Has this an old boy, man? Up man, fetter, that way, man. The combined grit of the English garrison and Willikin's surprise attacks ensured that Dover hadn't fallen yet. Now the English prepared to repel the final French assault.
tenacity of Hubert de Burr's loyal soldiers forced Prince Louis and the rebel barons to abandon their siege at Dover. And thanks to the efforts of Willikens' fearless archers, England remained in King John's hands.